This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through now and look at an accounting standard that half of which should be familiar to you. Uh, we're going to go through and look at IS21, the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates, uh, which you did see previously in F1. Okay, uh, It doesn't get re-examined as such, but it's important that you have a knowledge of it before you then go through and then apply it further in F2. So what have we got? Well, little diagram up there. Very, very, very basic diagram. I'm not too good at artwork. Uh, but if you think about the little triangle uh, in the top left of the screen, uh, that's the UK. So what we have there is we have a UK company. And remember, we went through an F1 and determined the functional currency. The functional currency was the primary economic environment of where that entity operated. So it was determined, wasn't it, based upon the, the sales that we invoiced in, based upon the costs that we paid, whether that was labour costs, materials costs, and how we raised finance. So, so here, our UK company is very much a, a, a company that, that buys and sells goods in pounds, pays the staff in pounds, buys the raw materials in pounds, and is financed in pounds. Okay, So the functional currency there is the pound sterling. And what we went through and did that is we looked at what happened, didn't we, if we bought or sold goods on credit with a country overseas. Uh, so a German company, and let's just say there that that German company has its functional currency of the euro. So we looked there at what happened when we initially recorded the transaction. So that was recorded, was it, at the historic rate, wasn't it? And then at the reporting date, we went through there, didn't we? And we did an exercise whereby we looked at any monetary items that we then retranslated at the closing rate. Uh, any exchange gains and losses then went through profit or loss, didn't they? And then we looked at non-monetary items and those non-monetary items we left them and did not retranslate did we so what we had there is that when a transaction took place we translated it at the historic rate and then if it was monetary we retranslated it at the reporting date if it was non-monetary we left it wasn't it so we looked at it monetary translate retranslate non-monetary translate leave okay if there are any gains and losses they went through profit or loss didn't they OK, uh, what we're going to look at now is just going to advance it on a little bit further with regards to group accounts, because what you could have there is that you could have your UK parent company that controls. So owns greater than 50 percent to keep it simple. So we have the power to direct the operations or the activities of a company based overseas. And that company based overseas has the functional currency of the euro and that euro currency is different to the currency that is presented by the group accounts. So if that's the case, when we go to consolidate, you know, we're going to take all the assets, liabilities, income of the parent, and add it across with those of the subsidiary. We can't just take pounds and add them to euros. We need to go through there, don't we, and adjust the euros to convert them into the currency that the group presents its financial statements in and then do the consolidation. So we're gonna to have to look at a little bit of translation prior to consolidation. And then what we're gonna to have to go through and look at then it is how to calculate some specific overseas balances, such as goodwill, non-controlling interest as well. Okay, because don't forget the non-controlling interest own their share of that overseas subsidiary. So they own their share of an overseas sub we need to know what that share is worth before we then go through there and convert it into pounds sterling or if you like the, the currency that the group presents the financial statements in. OK, so it's all about translation into the group presentation currency and then thinking about specific balances. That's it. So the way in which we're going to approach it is you know, you've got that French subsidiary there because we have control. The first bit that we'll look at there is with the German company. Uh, and looking at the individual transactions, because don't forget what essentially you could have is that you could have an overseas subsidiary. Uh, so your French subsidiary that trades overseas as well. So it might buy and sell goods in dollars. So you need to translate the dollars into the euros first to get everything right in the subs books before we then go through there and look at the second bit, which is when we do the translation. OK, uh, before we then consolidate. So. I think most of the questions will focus on the consolidation, but do just be aware there's nothing to stop the examiner being a bit evil uh, 
and getting you to convert an overseas balance in a subsidiary's books into the functional currency of the sub before it is then retranslated uh, and shown in the presentation currency of the group. <sighs> Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Okay, so strap yourselves in. Uh, it won't be as bad as what you think. I've seen many of the questions in the revision kits and, and what we've put together as well. Uh, and it's not as bad as what you may originally think. Uh, but strap yourselves in and enjoy the ride.